Good afternoon, welcome to Yarn Lane. We are the only British shopping channel completely dedicated to everything yarn. So whether it's knitting or crochet or animals or all sorts of corner to corner, we do it. And it's fantastic. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Now I'm going to take you to the website before I do anything. Um, it's the best way to get in, this is the best way for you to get in touch with if you want any questions. Uh, if you go to the website, www.yarnlane.com, click on watch the show live. Then you will see a box. Oh, it's gone to a big picture now. Anyway, then you scroll down, right? And there's a box there where you can send your message in. Well, there, those, those, these, those needles are there, look. Okay. Okay, so that's where you send the message. But if you also scroll down, uh, the, everything on today's show deals everything so there's some buttons they look enormous don't they every single thing i'm going to show in this hour is already on there and believe me they are flying out uh, the little the little um child baby baby lacy one is very very popular just to warn you so everything is there all you need to do is click on add to your basket you can also send a message on your facebook live or you can send an email in but just have an hour of fun and enjoy so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take you through every single before we meet carrie uh, every single uh, kit that i've got for the show now i'm going to show you now Right, here we go. This is the first one. I'll show you the finished product. Look, 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 look. How cute is this? This feels so beautifully, beautifully soft. So there's a hat. There's a little uh, cardigan. Oh, look at that adorable cardigan. Oh, now look. So that's narrow stripes. That one's wider stripes. And then it also has a blanket with the narrow. Oh, this feels lovely. Let me show you the yarn that we've got in here. Cotton and bamboo. I told you we had some bamboo coming. Brand spanking new. So it's natural yarn from Stylecraft. And it's 60% bamboo, 40% cotton. Oh, that's why it feels so gorgeous. A hundred grams, perfect for sensitive skin. Also, I've got, well, I've got some bamboo socks and some bamboo pants. I think it's very good for to be by your skin and things like that, isn't it? So you've got um, one, two, oh, hang on, that's a different colour. You get two of those blues, two of those blues, two of, the, oh, there you go, two of the green, two of the lemon. Oh, our colour is slight, slightly different to that one. And then... Oh, and the yarn is machine washable as well. Machine washable. So this, uh, you've got enough in here to do the biggest one. This is birth to three years. You've got three easy knit designs in there from Stylecraft. There's all the, so there you go. So you go from a 36 centimetre chest up to a 56 centimetre chest. Beautiful. And you need uh, one pair of 3.25 knitting needles, which I've got coming up in a second. And a one pair of three and three quarters, which I've got coming up in a second. Oh, no, it's fantastic. And you can make, you don't have to choose three, you can make them all. Oh, isn't that lovely? So how much is that one? $37.99. So it's cotton and bamboo. It's, um, they also say it's got, um, what's it properties, don't they? Um, antibacterial properties in it and everything. It's beautiful. Oh, let's have a look. Gerardine. Well, John, I'm starting on the baby knitting now. We'd more hours in the day to make, uh, wish I had more hours in the day to make everything. Love and hugs from Gerardine. Oh, Gerardine, those you don't know, is a very, very big fan of uh, Sewing Street and her daughter, who we went through the whole wedding with. We, well, we went through the, no, no, we went through the engagement because he asked her to marry her in Iceland, not the supermarket. Then they got married and Gerardine had lots of sewing to do. And now they're having a baby. They're having a baby. So Gerardine's starting to do knitting now. So, so what a lovely set to do. Beautiful, beautiful set to do. So that is bamboo and cotton. It's lovely, isn't it? Really, really gorgeous. That is the hat, the anorak, the, anor the cardigan and the blanket. Don't be putting your baby in an anorak, please. Right, okay, I'm going to move on to the next one now, which is this one. Now, this is the one I was telling you. Oh, hang on. It's very, very, very popular, this one. We need a bigger table, don't we? Right, okay. So now this is, how cute is this? Look. Right, so that you get the, the pattern for the cardigan and the hat. Now, we have done the bundle uh, to, to, so you can do either size. Which colour would you like to do first? Right, buttermilk. Now, obviously, this one's been done in ivory. Ours is in buttermilk, which is just gorgeous, isn't it? Amazing new yarn and the pattern. 
10.99. £10.99. So it goes from a 36 centimetre chest to a 56 centimetre chest. Beautiful. Such good value, isn't it? And there's three designs in there. So there's a design for the hat, a design for that cardi, and a design for that cardi, I'm presuming. Uh, we've we've, uh, we've um, yardage or wooled up or whatever, y yarned up, wooled up, yarned up, bambooed up uh, for this one here. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, but it says here three designs. Yeah, let's have a quick look. I thought it was just the same in a different colour, but it says it's got three designs in there. Hang on, is there a third thing? Cardi. Oh, no, V-neck Cardi and a round neck Cardi. That's the difference. We've got the V... Thank you. We've got the V-neck Cardi here, and the round neck Cardi is in the blue. So you can choose whether you want V-neck or round neck. Now, I know when babies dribble, that's the bit where they get the most irritant, isn't it? When you dribble down, you think you don't want a round neck. It's like that all the time. I, well, yeah, we know that because Hannah dribbles. Right, okay. Right, so then moving on to the... Oh, this is such a lovely colour. The pale blue one now. Silver, they're calling this one. Again, it's still the beautiful bamboo and cotton. Natural yarn from Starcraft. That's a lovely colour, isn't it? Now, both of these colours would be good if you didn't know the gender of the baby because Vix didn't tell us, did she? Or she didn't know. So she didn't tell us. She didn't know what... Uh, what uh, gender she was having so this is brilliant if you do want to knit something and not be so i mean i'm it doesn't matter if you put what who you put in what color but you know what i mean if the if you want to have a gender neutral color then both those are beautiful okay uh, now hannah's just saying it's called silver it does have i would call it sky blue it they've, they've called it silver but i would call it a soft so, um, sky blue. It's more to the silver side, but it's got a blue tint to it, hint of blue to it. It's not bright blue like this, obviously, but it's got a tint of blue to it. But it's not blue cut like this one that's coming up in a minute. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful soft colour. Okay, now I've got this one coming up, which is a cable knit one. Oh, there we go. It's the cable knit one. How cute is this? So this one here, there are two designs in this one. We'll do the blue one first. So it comes again in, oh, it comes at collarless or with a collar, this one. Look, how lovely is that collar? So this is this one here. So we're doing the blue one first. This one is blue, uh, kind of um, beautiful, soft, very gentle. I'd say dark O'Donnelly blue, maybe um, duck egg blue. Uh, so lovely, isn't it? Now this one here is... Same size range, 36 in, uh, not inch, 36 centimetre chest to a 56 centimetre chest. That's newborn to three years. That's lovely, isn't it? Again, look at the detailing on there. That's so cute, isn't it? That I can I'd team that with like a little denim jacket. They'd look so cute in that, wouldn't they? With a that and a denim jacket, keep them warm. Right, okay. So that's that one. And then it also comes now. What colour have they called this one? I want to, uh, celery, celery, beautiful, isn't it? Oh, hang on, yeah, so what colour was that one there then? Ocean, that one's called Ocean, this one's called Celery. Again, exactly the same, the pattern, two different designs, the one with the collar and the one with the V-neck. Cable knit, beautiful, isn't it? Okay, how much is that one? Fourteen ninety nine. these are all very good prices, aren't they? Fourteen ninety nine. Now, this one is the most popular of everything so far. It'll all change. Uh, oh, look, isn't that cute? So this is a hooded. Oh, I see. That's why it says two designs. The one in the, the um, corner here has got a round neck and no hood, and they've just used two different colours or three different colours in it. What we've done is we've put together that three balls of pink, pale pink, and the pattern. Same, it's the same um, size range as all the other ones there. How cute is it though? Little, but I, I can't tell you how soft. This is so soft, I can't tell you. I mean, when I was a child, you had wool and you had wool, didn't you really? This is um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Cotton and bamboo this is. So that's the pink version, right? We've also got this one in the silver. 
which is this colourway. I'll put it on top of the blue so you can see, ooh, see how pale it is compared to the blue. So this is the silver version. Yep. Same thing, three balls, plus your um, instructions. 14 pounds and 99 pence. Right, then I've actually got a blue, like this one. There you go. So there you go. Now this one is called Powder Blue. It's lovely, isn't it? Say this again. Oh yeah, they're all underneath on the web, so don't be thinking I've got to rush now. 14 99 But now I've shown you everything, all the kits we've got for sale, you can start making your mind up. And then we'll, I'll just use Carrie in a second and we'll do some uh, knitting demoing. I just need to take you through the... Um, do you want me to do these? No? Okay. They're, they're all on the website. Hello. Hello. We haven't met before, have we? We haven't, no. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. good, are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Very good. So, before we start knitting, so how did you, when did you start knitting? How did it all begin? Um, when I was about, I'd say, seven, and my grand taught me to knit. Oh. And I used to li knit little toys and things like that. And then I gave up, of course, because it was not cool. No. When no. I was, you know, about ten. And then when I was at university, one of my friends started knitting. She was dreadful. Bless her heart. She won't mind me telling oh. you that she was absolutely dreadful. And so... I just ended up fixing stuff for her and then just started knitting from there again. And I've, yeah, so that was more years than I'm going to say. Okay, then. and <laughs> is, it your, is it your career? Is this what you do now? No, I'm a, muse well, I'm, I'm a museum curator oh, by day. How fascinating. And, uh, and this is my hobby and my love and yeah. Oh, it's, and, it, I, it, and it, I teach as well. Have you met Catherine? Yes. Yeah, uh, Catherine Wright. I, I teach with Catherine Wright. As oh, well sometimes. is it the Leicestershire? Yeah, Craft yeah, Centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. brilliant. And where, can I ask where your museum is? What kind of museum it's is it? It's Daventry. And what's, what's in it? It's a social history museum. Oh, how fantastic. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really fantastic town. Lots of history, lots yeah. of going, dating back to Romans and prehistory. And so, yeah. How brilliant. I, yeah. I, I, well, this is what I love about all our yarn main guests. Because there's uh, Vanessa the other day, she's an accountant. Oh, okay. Great. And it's because you love doing this and the passion comes across because you're not going, oh, I'm going to work to knit a jumper. You're actually doing it because you love exactly. doing it so yeah, much. Absolutely. Okay, so what are you going to show us today? Well, a few things. I'm going to go through each of the patterns yep. and show you a few different things. Um, I wanted to show you on the um, colour changing. Now, the, oh, that bundle is just lovely, isn't it? I think that would make just such a beautiful gift with the uh -huh. hat and the cardi and the blanket. And as you said, you spotted, you've got different uh, variety of stripes. So yes. The blanket and the hat are knitted in narrower stripes yep. and then your cardigan is knitted in slightly larger stripes. So what I've done here is just done a, t um, just done a sample for you. This is a sleeve because my first tip and, and I did say this when I was, I was with Wendy a couple of weeks ago that you do need to do attention square. I'm going to be that boring knitter who tells you that you need to do attention square. Right. Especially for babies, that's going to be really important because if you want them to wear it in the right season, although bamboo, you could, you know, yes, bamboo exactly. and cotton, you can kind of wear it all year, can't you? Um, so I'm going to say, make sure you knit attention square. But my trick is, not start knitting the smallest item. Start knitting the smallest piece. Right. So this is the sleeve. So I can now check my tension on this sleeve. If it's wrong, I haven't knitted very much. Right. I can rip it back. But if it's correct, I've started to knit a sleeve already. I haven't Perfect. just done a random square. Oh, so that is your sample, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I'm going to show you also just a little trick of colour changing, um, which is something that lots of people know how to do anyway. But you can end up with slightly baggy stitches. So there's two tricks I want to show you. Okay. With, the, um, with the cardigan, as I say, you are going to sew in these ends because you've got wider strip bands so i'm just going to start knitting with this beautiful buttermilk color because that's the next in my color sequence and what i'm going to do is insert the needle in just pinching it over to start a new color it all looks a bit baggy at that point don't panic uh -huh. this is where we're going to tighten it up tighten up the old color and then i'm going to knit the next stitch with the tail and the working yarn of this new colour. Oh, so the previous colour plus the new colour. No, no, I'm going to leave the previous colour. Oh, I'm just okay. tightening up the previous colour. Yeah. But the tail and the working yarn oh, of this new oh, colour, I'm going to knit that together and then I'm going to drop the tail. 
Right. So when we come back to that stitch, it's going to look a bit odd. It's going to look like we've got two stitches, but we must remember that it is just one. So I'm going to just carry on knitting. My other trick that I would say with this, because the cardigan, the cardigans are most of these patterns, except the little lacy one. Yeah. All of the button bands are knitted separately. You, you, well, you don't knit them separately. You pick up stitches uh -huh. along the side once you've knitted the side, uh, once you've knitted your two front pieces, mm -hmm. you pick up along the side. And the best way I found it, it can look a bit, it can look a bit holy to begin with as you're, as you're doing that. And you don't want, you don't really want that because it doesn't look very neat. So my trick is to slip the first stitch of every row to make sure that that doesn't happen. It just makes, and you can do this on any knitting. Uh -huh. You can just slip the first stitch. So I'm not going to knit that first stitch. I'm just going to slip it on and then knit the next one. And it just gives you such a nice, neat edge. It don't, you don't end up with um, that baggy, you know, baggy edge down here. You've got a really lovely, neat edge that when you pick up your stitches, not only is it really easy to pick up your stitches, yeah. it's also, you know, you haven't got holes as you're then doing your button band. So we're coming back along this row to the stitch where I used both the um, working yarn and the tail together and we're just going to carry on. I would say that this is lovely, all of this is in garter stitch apart from you've got a rib at the bottom. I was about to ask you that, so what's garter stitch then? Garter stitch is knitting every row, so perfect if oh, you're a beginner, right. but also perfect if you just wanted something that knitted up really quickly uh -huh. because you've got a baby, you know, in the family on the way or whatever. Here we go. I've come to that. I've come to that stitch there, where it looks like I've got two stitches, but actually it's just one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to knit them together, and that's it. So that's my little tip, just for the people change colours in all different ways, but that would, that's just a nice and look. It's nice and neat. Yeah. You haven't got any, you know, loose or baggy stitches, so, and that is it. So you would just carry on. Now with this one, as I said, you don't travel the yarn up the side, uh -huh. but I'm going to show you, I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to show you two things. Right. First of all, loads of people have a different way of casting on right. and people have their own, you know, way that they like to cast on. In this pattern, in lots of the patterns, it tells you to use uh, the thumb cast on method because it's a bit more stretchy, especially for hats, it's going to give that nice stretchy feel to the hat. So the way that you do the thumb cast on, and I'm just going to cast on a few because the other thing I want to show you is how you then travel the, um, the other colours up the side of your knitting. So I've got the tail of the yarn in the, in the palm of my hand mm -hmm. and I'm just going to circle it around my thumb, pop the needle into that circle and knit. So my thumb, the thumb, when it says thumb cast on, the thumb cast on is using using your thumb as a, as the second needle. I was going to say it's instead of the other needle. Yeah. Yes. So we go all the way round and knit the stitch, and that is the thumb cast on. The only slightly tricky thing with the thumb cast on is that you do need to leave yourself a tail that is long enough that you can cast on all of your stitches. Whereas if you were doing a cable cast on, for example, you don't need to leave a long tail. But what, another trick that you can do is before you start, if you work out how many stitches is it that you need to cast on, you can just twist the yarn around your needle right. that many times. Oh, so you make sure it's long enough. And then you enough. make sure you've got a long enough tail. Brilliant. So there it it's is. good that you're doing that because we've got new, Jackie's just put, first time I've watched Yarn Lane, I love doing cable knits. So uh, that's really good that we've got, because we, Margaret says good afternoon. It's lots of people watching this afternoon. Oh, so lovely, yeah. Uh, there's something for everyone, I think, in these patterns. There's something for beginners, you know, somebody who wants to perhaps challenge themselves a little bit more if you wanted to do um, the little bit of lace but didn't want to do a whole thing in lace. And then you've got the cable as well. And then the other pattern with the hood is a lovely stitch, which I haven't used for a really long time. So I'm going oh, to well, we'll get that. that to the second. Yeah. Also, it's like, it's like crochet knitting seems to have had a resurgence. Like you said, mm. a lot of people started doing it, then it either wasn't cool or life takes over, yeah. doesn't it? And, yeah. And, but like now, it seems to be that, that all those kind of craft, especially with lockdown and everything, that people have taken back the knitting and they're, they're really enjoying making like uh, making things for other people and for people's children. And things yeah, like that. I completely agree. I think it's, I think we do, we use technology so much, don't we? 
and that's intangible. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually get our hands involved with making yeah. something for people and, and you end up with something physical at the end there. And also, I think if, you, if we have stressful, we all have things to worry about. Yeah. It's like when you're doing sewing, knitting must be the same, that for yeah. that time that you're sitting knitting, your mind is on the knitting and yeah. enjoying that. You're not thinking about the tra traumas of the day, is it? Well. It's a fantastic way to switch off, I think. Yeah. I've, I've used it throughout the years as something that is, you know, I've used as I've made these stitches really tight, these first ones, so I'm just oh. struggling <laughs> to get my needle in there. Um, what, do you do, what do you do if you make it too tight? How do you, do you literally... You can just... All I would do is just just wiggle the stitches okay. a little bit and you, it loosens it off a bit. Okay, brilliant. But sometimes when you're cut, that's another thing to say about the thumb cast off. And so one of the reasons why people might not use it as much is because you can, there is the tendency to perhaps make it a bit too tight. So I would say if it's your first time of using that method, just go easy. You can always tighten up the tension on your next row. And that's easier than, you know, like I just did then, not being able to get your, get your needle in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to knit one more little row with this colour and then I'm going to show you how we would travel the colours up the side. And the brilliant thing with that is though, when you're knitting that big blanket, mm -hmm. all, in all in garter stitch, so knitting every row, apart from your edges, which are in rib, so knit, knit two, purl two, you aren't going to have loads and loads of edges right. to have to, uh, loads of ends to sew in because that could be quite annoying mm. with the amount of stripes that you've got on that. Oh so yes, it's very, yes, because these are, the, these are the narrow stripes, aren't they? So yeah. every time you get to the end, have you got, are you saying at the end time, every time you come to the end of one of those colour blocks, you have a... You would have done, yeah. So you would do if you didn't travel okay. the yarn up the side. So I've got the beautiful ocean colour there. So my next colour that I'm going to do is this powder blue, and I might not be doing it in exactly the same sequences it's shown there on screen let's find the end remember this bundle you've got enough yarn in there for the cardi mm. i'll take you through it all the cardi the hat and yeah, the blanket the whole thing so i'm just going to start i'm just going to change the color just like i did before i'm going to change the color but what i'm going to do as i am knitting this next stitch with the um, tail and the working yarn of this new color what i'm going to do with the old color is i'm going to pop it over the top like that before I knit and that is just going to travel it up the side so at that point there I've done my stitch done my double stitch with my tail and the working yarn uh -huh. so now I'm going to start with the new color and I'm going to show you just at the back how it's just tucked that old color up the side so I can come back to it when it's my next when I'm when it's my turn to use ocean again oh so you don't cut anything no, off no we just travel it up the side and that's what the pattern tells you but some people you know if you haven't come across that before that can seem a bit mm -hmm. daunting and you have big old baggy edges but the way to do it is to tuck it into right tuck it into your next into the um, next stitch along so, so it's just in the next stitch mm -hmm. and then you leave it there yeah. or it's not going along when you say it's traveling it's not coming on the whole it's row not going along the whole row so it's you. not going to waste a whole row no, of no. wool okay. no not at all and in fact i would say that using this method you you don't really waste any yarn because yes you're traveling along the side of your knitting but you haven't got a big tail that you've then no. sewn in and cut half of it off so it's only really in. like two stitches worth is it like a couple of stitches worth? Well, yeah, I, I think uh, on the on the blanket you've got maybe four rows of each colour, something like that. Okay. Four rows of each colour. So as you're travelling up the side, it's gone up four. It's gone up maybe eight rows because you've um, done or, two colours. Yeah, done yeah. two colours. So oh, we I go. see. So literally, it's an inch. It's on mine now. If I went from the cream until it gets to the next cream, it's only about an inch yeah. on there. So you're only there's only exactly. an inch. And so you're not cutting a tail off. You're not tying a tail in because you've literally just got an inch worth before you set yeah. off. Yeah, and you haven't got tons of sewing. So you have in. all three, all three balls or four, or four hang on, yeah. colours. Yeah, four, four going at the same time. Yeah, then. yeah, you would. Yeah. So here we go. At the I've got the there's the colour that I want to travel up. So all you do is you pop it, it's almost like it's, you're, you're just catching it. So there you go, I've cut it over the top of that new colour that I'm using, just so that it gets travelled up the side. And that is as simple as it is. You're just, you're just, you're not, you're not knitting with it, you're just looping it in yeah. to the next row so that it will travel up the side. And that's just for something really simple. If you haven't done many colour changes before, 
by the time you've done this pattern, you're yeah. going to have garter stitch and, you know, But it's changing. quite a simple one to do. So it's not you've got any other, you haven't got any other pattern or anything to worry about. No. You're just knitting a row. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you've, that's all you've got to worry about. You haven't got to think, oh, I've got to do that and knit it into a fair aisle and do this and yeah. do that. It's literally, <laughs> you're just moving each. The yeah. so, so you have all four balls going at the same mm -hmm. time. What is your tip for not letting them all get tangled up with each other? Um, making sure that you've got, you've, you're keeping it relative. You, I would say don't, don't let yourself get a, a huge amount of yarn rolling away so on, have the them on the floor. Well, you could have them on the floor. I've seen some people have these lovely bowls that have got, you can put, so you can put, your, put it in a bowl. But the trick I have is to put it in a bag and say, you know, just in your knitting bag. Yeah, yeah. Keep them in the knitting bag with it just open so that the yarn can come through, right. but it's not all. Uh, yeah, somebody sent me a picture, I think it was Donna, of her husband, and he'd made her these wooden bowls with like a, a kind of S shape yeah. cut at them, and then the thread, yeah. the yarn, the ball sits in the bowl, and then just the thread and the yarn comes out of the hole at the side. Exactly. Thing. So that would keep them all separate, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah, they're yeah. brilliant. I mean, you would then have to have four bowls yes. on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depends. Yeah, they, I've seen those, they look really nice. Yeah. Um, so that is, those are my tricks for that one. Okay, I perfect. Say, and just great pattern, really, and great colours. Yep. They just look so nice. And I, I can't get over how, because mm. so, it's it's all natural, isn't it? Yep. Bamboo and cotton. There's no yep. nothing synthetic or nope. acrylic in there, and yet it feels incredible. I'd love. He said, I'd like this cardi. Yes. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> I'd wear cardies if they felt, you know, if they felt like yeah. that sort of thing. Agreed. I just don't like scratchy cardies. Right, okay, let me recap that one. Before we move on to the next uh, demo, let me recap. So the pattern is for the cardi, the hat, and the beautiful blanket. Now, if you were just, if you were just starting off, would you do the blanket first? If you were, like, if you were new, if you were sort of newish to knitting. I think if you were completely new to knitting, I would go with the cardigan first. Oh, well, yeah. I, you see, in my only brain, I think, oh, I'll just go with this. Well, only because you've got a lot of stitches right. with the blanket, haven't you? You've got yes. quite a lot of stitches. Um, so that in itself could be a little bit daunting, okay. perhaps. But whereas, yeah, you're getting all the techniques that you need in the cardigan to then transfer and it to the blanket. And also, if you say, do your sample tension square mm -hmm. is your sleeve like you say you're halfway up the sleeve by then aren't yeah. you okay this is the bundle here so you get uh, two of the green two of the uh, blue two of the darker blue and two of the natural all in there for 37 nine, ten, and the instructions 37 pounds and nine, ten, but remember it's bamboo and cotton brand new today bamboo and cotton beautiful right so then we're going to move on to the little uh, lacy cardigan now oh which is beautiful. We've got this in two different colours, but I'll let you do your, uh, we'll do buttermilk and um, there's the buttermilk one coming through. It's a slightly different colour to the sample. The sample's like a, a creamy ivory. This is more of a beautiful buttermilk. There's only 12 of these left. 12 of this one left. Now the pattern is for the hat and the cardi and you can do the cardi round neck or you can do it V-neck. Whatever, and you can do it up to the largest size in there. So it's the hat and the cardi. You get two balls of the bamboo and cotton in the buttermilk and then we've also got it in silver this one here that's your silver two balls and the pattern so what do you want to show us on this one then? on this one i was going to show you the um the slight the little bit of lace that you will, you mm. will work which is worked around the hat and around the edge and on the sleeve of, of all of the patterns so the hat and both of the cardigans the thing to say with this one also is that the um, the button band is knitted as one piece. You're knitting it all together in with the cardigan. You're not doing. You're not picking up any stitches. Oh, so as you go along in the row, mm -hmm. the last few stitches will be a different stitch to make they a are, rib. It's almost like like a fake rib. Yes. If you look at it, it's yeah. two. Yeah, you're doing um, a couple of rows of pearl and a couple of rows. Um, Sorry, a couple of rows of garter stitch and a couple of rows of stocking stitch to give you the effect. So it looks like rib up the side, but actually it's not. No. And, um, and it's all knitted as one piece. And then you've got lovely raglan sleeves there as well. Oh, um, you yes. can't really see on the cream one, but uh, on the um, on the pattern, but you, on the uh, pig picture, but you can see on the on the blue one there. Um, so I've what I've done is I've started the hat in silver. I love this. I'm a lover of grey yes. and you know anything sort of blue and grey. Um, so this one really speaks to me. This is gorgeous. Both colourways are in the graphics there. Just choose the one, which one you want. 
So um, here's the, the start of the hat. Now, don't be put off by the fact that I have started knitting this on circular needles. I tend to knit most things on circular needles. Um, just find it a bit more comfortable. But then, uh, yeah, then it can, you can still you can do it on straight needles and circular exactly needles. Exactly because can't you? yeah, you can. Well, that's what I'm saying. Don't be put off by the fact I'm doing it on circular needles because it's not knitted circular. You're doing it flat. You're knitting it flat. You're doing some beautiful shaping mm -hmm. to give you that lovely shape around the top of the crown there, and then you are sewing the back seam. Right. So nice and simple. So I'm just going to turn to the to the back of the pattern. Starcraft are just known for having fantastic patterns as well. All the patterns are there written really, really well and so easy to follow as well. And like you say, you've got all of your sizes, just like you would in, in lots of traditional patterns. All the sizes are there, so you just circle which size it is that you're, you're going to be knitting and then you Perfect. can go ahead through the whole thing. So I have started, you can see there, we've got this lovely brim there and then I've started doing the lace and right. I've done that a few times you've got a couple of pattern repeats for the sort of lacy stitch there so I am at a point now where I'm going to show you the lace knitting and when we say lace what we're talking about is is making stitches and um, and decreasing stitches to give you those holes and, the, and then over. the gathers. Is it not called yarn over? Yarn forward in this case. But oh, yeah, forward, yarn nearly, yeah. Right. It's nearly right, yarn, it's yeah. nearly right. Yarn forward or yarn is exactly yeah. the same as yarn over, to be fair. Okay, let's, oh, there we go. Just sort that ball oh. of wool out. Mm, getting in a tangle. There we go, there we go, right. So you my need next, a bowl to put that I in. need a bowl. I've not got a bowl <laughs> handy. No, got no I bowls. don't know. Okay, so I've knitted two. The next thing I'm going to do is to knit two stitches together. So I'm just picking up those two stitches there uh -huh. and just knitting them together because my next instruction is to. Hang on a second, where, yes, my next instruction is to yarn forward. So I'm yarning forward or yarning over, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to knit three. So I needed to do that decrease so, and then an increase so that I didn't then end up with tons more stitches mm -hmm. than I was supposed to have. And then I'm yarning forward again. So yarning over, yarning forward, and then I'm slipping one. When you slip one, make sure that you're slipping it pearl-wise. And when I say pearl-wise, as if you were going to pearl. Yeah just because it's much neater. You don't get your, your um, stitch twisted. Slipping one and then, oh, hang on there. Making sure that you get your, your yarn in the right place. <laughs> um, there we go. So slipping one and then knitting one. And then I'm, it, there's PSSO, which is pass, slip, stitch, over. Right. So there's a stitch that I slipped. I'm passing it over the top. It's almost like casting off. Yeah, um, and then I'm knitting one, and then I have to knit seven. So one. So that'll be the bit between the lacy bits. Exactly. Doing, yeah. <clears throat> so you'll get over to the correct place. Let's make sure I've got those. Oh. Seven. There we go. Counting on television and is <laughs> you know. What Riveting. With, what with that and the bank holiday this weekend, put, completely putting me out. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> right. Do you know what? I think I've gone over too many. There we go. So I'm now going to do the knit two together. Uh huh. Yarn so over that's or decreasing. yarn forward. Yeah. Then now you're yarn. putting a yarn over or yarn forward. Yeah. To increase. Yeah. Just as you're doing that, as you're doing your yarn over, make sure that it is to the back and that you're not going to you know you're not getting mess yeah. making it messy basically one just so just taking a bit of time and I would say this is a really good pattern for you know if you if you wanted to do a little bit of lace knitting but you'd never done it before it's a really nice one it's nice and gentle you're only doing a little bit of lace but you're learning all of the things but I can that understand you would that I'm not a knitter exactly. and I can understand yeah. what you're doing, you're doing you're just making sure you, you count your stitches yeah. where they're supposed to happen yeah you know? you're doing all the things that you would do in a more complicated lace yeah. pattern. So that is that is it with the with the um, lace to be honest with okay. you. Um, so it makes almost and what would you say? I was trying to work out what that pattern was on the lace. It's almost like a little it's not a star, is it? It's it's like, it looks like a little fleur de lis or it does, oh, does, sort of because it opens up like that yeah, and then comes back round. It does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? So with lace some I think some people there's the misnomer that it could be a little bit, you know, more for a girl. 
but I would not say so with this pattern. No. I would say that actually in those colours that we've got... The thing is, they're babies. I know. Do you know what it means? It doesn't matter if you put a little boy with a bit of lace work on no. him. He's a child, not going to... I think my little boy went to bed wearing pink uh, baby grows Ex because who cares? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and who right. saw him? I'll just say, is that all? There's nothing yes, else on that no, we need there to look is, out there's for. nothing else that you need to look out for. The pattern, as we were saying, Starcraft, known for just fantastic patterns, written really well. Yeah. And this is the only one that doesn't have the button band knitted separately. Um, fantastic introduction to lace um, because you've got it all there and then you could take that on to another project. Okay, someone's asked the size of your needles. It's three and a quarter, 3.25 and a four for this one. 3.25 and a four. Okay, let me just recap very quickly. This is, uh, which is the most popular of the colours? Okay, buttermilk is the most popular and silver is in the main graphics right now. There's your silver one, the graphics now. Single figures on the silver. Well, if the buttermilk's been even more popular, there'd be even fewer of those. And then the buttermilk ones. Six of those left when you've all checked out of the buttermilk. Right, now let's get on to the cable one. This one comes in two different colourways. I've got it in the green. Celery and ocean was this one called. Yeah, ocean. Celery and ocean were the two colours here. This is beautiful. This is the finished item. Now you can have it with the collar or you can have it as a V-neck without the collar and it's got the cable knit there. So which one do you put through first? Ocean, that's this one. You get three balls of the yarn. It's bamboo and cotton, remember it feels beautiful. That's your ocean. And then your other graphic for this one is celery, which I love that colour. Beautiful, beautiful colour there. Graphics have come in. Now, Right, what are, you can take, take me out and we'll have the, both the graphics in again while we're doing the, the demo. What are you going to show on this one? I'm going to show you, again I've used the, I've used the, well actually this time I've used, uh, yes I have done the, um, the sleeve to do my tension um, square. So on all of the patterns it will tell you what your tension is going to be over. Um, you can you can do it over stocking stitch, but you can also do it over the cable as well. So you could, like I said, start knitting, and then you would have um, a bit of knitting um, that you don't have to, you know, st take back if, yes, if exactly. your tension. Yeah, is there's correct. no point in just knitting a square to check your tension to then undo it or yeah. get rid of and start again. At least that way you've got half a sleeve. I think you? that's what yeah. pe puts people off. Oh, of knit watch, watch oh sorry. Oh, sorry. I think that's what puts people off knitting tension squares because they think, well, well I just want to get knitting. I want to mm. start my project, but I'm knitting a silly square. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, knit that small thing. That and silly that, square within the sleeve. Si exactly. And with baby, you know, baby pieces, everything's yeah. quite small anyway, yeah, exactly. isn't it? Um, uh, single figures on celery, just so you need to know. Um, right, okay. The other thing to say, that we were talking about how fantastic this yarn is, and it is beautiful and it is really soft, and it has got all those lovely natural products in there, that natural um, materials that are great for baby's skin. Um, I noticed that you can also put it in a cool tumble. How oh. cool is that? I th I'm, you know, I'm always, oh, you know, when they were little, you know, get that through the wash. And if it's a favourite item, yeah. fantastic to be able to put that through the tumble no, dryer exactly. as well. Brilliant. Yeah. So I'm going to show you, um, I wanted to show you the cable on this one. Okay. So here we go. Are we going to slightly more advanced knitters now? I would cable? say this has got three cables in it. Two of them are exactly the same and um, and this one is this one here is a, called a horseshoe in, that's in the middle. Right, the, that's the chunky just, one. Yeah, the yeah. chunky one. And then we've got just a traditional um, cable going running up the side. Right. Um, so once you've once you've done your rib, you then do a couple of uh, rows which will uh, set you up to where your where your cables are going to go and then you start cabling. The cables in this, I would say, are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So actually, a really good one for if you haven't done okay, cables perfect. before. Because um, you've got all of your abbreviations written in the pattern as well. But you're, all you're doing is cabling forward and cabling back. So when you see the instruction that says, I'm just trying to find it here, that says CF... Uh, oh, hang on, do you want me to show that on... You on can not? do. Yeah. Right, C4F. What, what page are you about? Well, I don't know. I, do you know what? Oh, yeah, bring I yours to the centre. I can bring it forward. Brilliant. Here we go, look. It. There we go. So C F uh, C four F. Yeah. Now four is the total number of stitches that are involved with the cable. So actually, what we're going to be doing that's it tells us we're doing a cable because it's C. Uh, the four tells us stitches, the total amount of stitches that are involved with the cable, and then the F or it could be a B tells you whether you're holding your cable needle to the front or to the back. Okay. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. So I'm going to start knitting. What's a cable needle? 
Well, you've got some beautiful cable needles with the lovely, um, with the lovely. Oh, these! They're out of stock. These ones here oh. are sold out. I'm but afraid. what you could use is just a normal double pointed. Needle. Oh, okay, okay. So it's another needle. It's a another, another needle. Another needle. Sorry, I did. Uh, that. That's fine. So I just used a double pointed needle because actually I can't find my cable needle either. Oh, okay. At home. Anyway, they'll know, be on these, the web. They'll be on the website. Yeah, these double pointed. Happen. So I'm going to knit three stitches here, and then I'm purling some. And then I'm going to get, this is all building up to get to the position for the cable. Mm -hmm. So taking the yarn to the back because my cable is all, is almost always, and in this pattern it is, but cables generally speaking are always knitted rather than purled. Right. So I get my double pointed or my cable needle yeah. and I'm going to slip one, two stitches off onto the cable needle and keep them forward. So when I said that it's four stitches in total, we only, we're only twisting half that amount. Right. So late in a moment, we're going to do six stitches in total, but that means that we just halve it. So we have three stitches at the front or three stitches at the back. Okay. So I have taken, I've slipped two stitches off and I'm holding them to the front because that's what my instructions tell me to do. Then I knit the stitches that are, I knit the next two stitches, because remember it's just four stitches involved with the cable there. So I'm knitting those two and then I'm knitting the ones from my cable needle. One, two. And then that can go to one side again until I need it again. And now I'm back to the pattern that sets up. So you see we've got this lovely, this lovely little rib right. running down the middle yeah. there. And that's just, just through knitting and purling. It's nothing, nothing more complex. But as I say, I do think this is a lovely one for if you haven't done cabling before, yeah. but you wanted to give it a go. So now I've come to the instruction, which is C6B. So I'm halving that six and I'm slipping three, one, two, three, right. onto the cable needle. I'm holding it to the back because it's B is right. the instruction. Oh, I see. The last one, it was in the front of the it knitting was, and that to the back of the Exactly. It was F, so it was to the front. Now I'm knitting one, two, three here right and then i go to the ones on my cable needle and essentially all you're doing is knitting your stitches out of sequence and yeah, cable so you're actually criss you're actually crisscrossing them yeah, aren't you because all cabling is is crossing stitches is crossing them twisting them oh, okay. and in order to do that we need to knit stitches How out of sequence yeah i thought it would just be way more complicated no it's than that. really not um, so I've come to the next one. The horseshoe cable, which is the one that runs up the middle, yeah. is um, two, um, two lots of cabling straight after each other. Right. But one is held to the back and one is held to the okay. front. So now I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I'm going to knit those ones that are on my cable needle. Don't be, um, don't be, I would say that if you are a bit new to this and you want to give cabling a go, do stick with it because the first time, a couple of times that you cable, you're going to find it awkward because you've got that third needle. Yeah. So you are going to find it a bit awkward, mm. but you can do it. Just you know, just give it a go, and it becomes. But well, you're not making it look very difficult. <laughs> it it's kind of like it becomes really simple. It does, honestly, yeah. honestly does. And you can do so many beautiful things with cable. Like I said, with the you know with the garter stitch um, set that you've got. Um, you know, you're setting yourself up to be able to do other things as well. But what a fantastic, you know, project that you've knitted there. Well, also, anyone's going to be impressed if you if you turn up with one of these as a present. People are going to be like, "You made that?" Yeah, I know, I know. I had so many. I I have a knitting group at home, so I've just lost some of my stitches there. I have a knitting group at home, and when um, when I had my babies, oh my goodness, they had a whole knitted wardrobe. Oh. Um, and and to receive these sorts of things is just wonderful. It's so it's so lovely, and someone's taken so much care and time, mm. and you must be very special to that person for them to have. have exactly, that but what you. I also love is I get bored quite easily, and if I was knitting a whole jumper. I'd be like, oh, I'm a bit bored of this, and I'm only <laughs> up halfway up the first side. Because you're working in, yeah. pro, you know, mini in proportions, you mm. can not necessarily get it finished quickly, but it'd be quicker or a quicker project than mm. making a whole grown-up jumper. Yeah, sort of I completely thing. agree. I like knitting for babies. Perfect. <laughs> right, let's move on from that one then. So I've got that one in celery. Oh, what's it? What's the gallery? What's in at the moment? Celery. Celery's in at the moment. Eight of the celery left once you've all checked out, and this is what you're making. But in the celery, obviously. 
and then in ocean, which is this one. Again, in the pattern, there's a choice of the one with the collar or a V-neck without the collar. There's your ocean. 12 of the ocean. Now, these, this is, I'm, I'm, the, I'm reading these out live. Obviously, on Yarn Lane, what happens on Yarn Lane, most people seem to watch. And then when we go off and have our lunch, there's a flurry of people checking out and putting things in their baskets. Right, let's move on to this last one, because you love this uh, stitch, don't you? We're running out of time. Mm. So, this is beautiful. This is uh, for this pattern here. Now, you can either make it with the hood, or you can make it round neck without the hood. This colour version here is powder blue. That's the powder blue. Half the stock of that one has gone. I am going to rush through these because we're getting a bit short of time. Then I've got the pink, which is um, pale pink. Yeah, pale pink. Was the most popular because we haven't done a demo on this one yet. It's fallen behind a little bit. And then last but not least, the silver. Oh, there we go. There's your silver. Remember, they're all uh, cotton and bamboo, bamboo and cotton uh, yarns. They're beautiful and soft. Right, what are we going to do on this one? On this one, I wanted to show you the construction of the hood. Oh, okay, perfect. So um, you can do it, as you said, with or without the hood. The hood is really simple, um, so don't be put off by it, is what I'd say. And mm -hmm. it's, I think it's really unusual, actually, to have a, a hood. And I think it's perhaps an older thing that they've brought up to date. Yeah, oh, yes. It's really it's, yeah. lovely. So with the hood, what you're going to do is you're going to be knitting in the pattern, and I will show you the stitch and how to do that oh, stitch. Has this got a name, this pattern? This, what, this, uh... Well, it's a, K5, a K5B which, but so, but don't be confused. But it's not a cable. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a K rather than a C. So yes. it's, what we're going to be doing? It's not a very attractive name. It's not like moss no, or stocking. I know. Stocking well, it, or it looks a little bit. There are two slightly two two ways to do it really one that ends up looking almost like a little butterfly yeah. and another one which is this one which ends up looking like the little bobbles oh. almost like a really soft gentle bobble there mm. but you're not making lots of bobbles Beautiful. we are going to be doing something which might um, some knitters might get a, a little bit worried about which is dropping the stitches a couple of rows down but there's I will show you it's okay. not it's not too daunting don't panic so the way that we would um, construct the hood is that you would knit uh, you knit a certain amount, certain amount of rows, and I've made a really small one, so I'm not going to be making a, a you know, hood is not going to be this small. Yeah. You knit to a certain point, and then you cast off some stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast off some stitches. To what, so you're finishing? As if I was finishing, but I'm not going to be finishing. What I'm going to be doing is carrying on it up the middle. And that's what creates, so we, it's almost like a little T-shape. If you can imagine a T-shape, we're really, f so you've got your, the, an upside down T. You've got yeah. the bottom of the T there, and we're casting off stitches either side, and then we're carrying oh, on knitting, okay. Okay. and then we join up those seams. So if you have a look on the top, um, you can see the seams um, on the top of the hood. Yeah, there you go. The seams on the top of the hood there. So that's where we've knitted to the side, we've knitted like a T-shape, yeah. then we've carried on knitting, and then we've joined up those seams on the side. Oh, so it's actually see. really simple construction. Yeah. Um, so I've got to this point, so I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to knit these ones in the middle, and then I'm going to cast off some stitches at the other side. You are going to have to forgive me if it is not even, because I have to say I haven't counted, really. <laughs> you just so follow the pattern two, on four, yours. Six, it's the eight, technique yeah. you use, but follow yeah, the don't, pattern. Don't follow me. Goodness me. Right, there we go. So now I've, I've knitted along there, and I think I've got probably around, let's get to, yeah, nine. Okay, so now I'm going to start casting off in the middle of a row. So you would have to get, there we go, I've just cast off there. So then we're going to have to, you're going to say, well, what, what's going to happen with your yarn? Where, what's going to happen with your yarn? What's going to happen with your yarn? Well, you're going to get to the end and we're going to cut it and then we're going to rejoin it. And it is as simple oh. as that. It, that's as, it's almost like doing a colour change. Right. But we've cast... With the same yarn. Yeah, with the same yarn. We've cast off some stitches at the end. We've left some stitches in the middle, which is going to be the crown of our hood. Right. And that's... And you can't travel, it. you've got to cut off. We have to cut it off because we need this shaping. Here we go. And it is going to be completely uneven, yeah. So there we go. There's the base of our T there. Yeah. And we're just going to be knitting up here. Oh, and then see. we join that seam there and that seam there. Right. And that's the so I'm going to cut this off and then I'm going to show you just rejoining. There we go, just rejoining. Let's get that cable needle out of the way. I don't need that anymore. 
So here we go. I'm going to start rejoining, but it's I'm going to be doing it purl-wise. So purl-wise rejoining, exactly the same as you would do on a knit. I've just done that little trick where I've used the tail and the working yarn. And now I've got to try and separate them and they're not being very cooperative. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to knit along just on those middle stitches. And that is how we do the hood. Oh, right. Now, when I get to the end and I'm on the other side, I'm going to show you how you create that K5B. Not to be confused with a cable because it is a no. K and not a C. So let's just get to the end here. Yeah, Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just. There we are. Right. So I'm going to knit a few stitches to set myself up to get to the right place. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do, once I'm there, well, I'm going to do three, once I'm there, and I, as I say, I am not following the pattern religiously here. I just want to show you. What I'm going to do, horror of horrors, I am going to let it go. I'm going to let it go by four. One, two, three, four. Right. And then I am going to put this right hand needle underneath those ladders that I've just made there and into the stitch to catch it. So it doesn't want, we don't want it to go any further. Right. And then I'm going to put my left hand needle in there. There we go. Hang on. Have I done that right? Yes, I have done that right. And then we're going to, oh, we're going to knit it. Hang on, have I told you that wrong? Oh, I'm so sorry. There we All go. Right. That's it. There you go. There we go. I put, I put my right before my left. Oh, goodness. Let me show you again. So we drop it down, we drop down right, so take one, it off. two, three, and four. Right. And then we pick it up. We pick oh, it up. Oh, I see. So you're not actually dropping a stitch because you're catching it for down. We're catching down. it and then we are knitting it. Right. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you one more. I'm gonna show yeah. you another time. So we take it off, just do it really controlled. It's not like, we, d we don't want it to go any more than four. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm just putting my thumb there just so that I'm catching it. So I'm going one, two, three, and four. And then I want to be able, I want to pick it up. There we go, I've caught it. And I've caught the ladders. Mm -hmm. I've caught it. And then I've put the other needle in. And then I've knitted them. And that causes and that, that little And that makes that beautiful bobble. little bobble. Yeah, my bobbles don't, aren't going to look as nice on that on this row because I've put them in completely the wrong place. Yeah. But I just wanted to show you how it's you know something so simple, just with knitting, that we can create something really lovely. Those really gentle little bobbles. I think perhaps a, you know bobbles are really popular at the moment yeah. on it and knitting. Yeah. And this is a great way, another technique, just another way to to show you how to how to make something so beautiful and textured. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much. Right. What do I want to recap? These three. Oh. Oh, pretty much all the other bundles are down to single figures. The big bundle that we did at the beginning had more in stock, so that's the bundle to make the cardi, the hat, and the lovely blankie. But there you go, so that's all there, 37.99. But please, 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 if you have a look underneath, and uh, now, everything from today's show is all listed there. It will say sold out if it's gone. Uh, at, the, at the moment, they've all got minimal, minimal, minimal uh, quantity. Uh, when's your name back? Friday, with Wendy and... Oh, Catherine writes in. Oh, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's doing what? Tunisian crochet. Oh, very nice. Lovely. Very nice. Thank you ever so much for coming in. That was thank absolutely you. brilliant. Uh, thank you for spending time with us today. I will be back on uh, Sewing Street on Saturday and Sunday. So until then, make sure you check out your baskets uh, and have a lovely couple of days.